So you're curious about yoga's benefits for your body and are wanting to demystify a lot of the common yoga terms like prana or shakti or kundalini. You are in the right place. I specialize in yoga for personal transformation and I've helped thousands of people get started with yoga, mastering the basics, all the way through to certifying with me to learn how to become their own best teacher. The first mistake to avoid is to not overlook the benefits of yoga. Yes, there are so, so many. Yoga improves strength, balance, and flexibility. It helps with low back pain. It relaxes you. It can help you sleep better. This can mean more energy, brighter moods. Yoga helps you manage stress. It reduces inflammation in the body. It improves your posture and bone health. It drains your lymph nodes and boosts your immunity. Yoga reduces blood pressure, regulates your adrenal glands, prevents IBS and other digestive issues. It helps you focus. Boom, there are 13 benefits of yoga for your body that I listed just off the top of my head. But the thing I see so many of my students overlook is this vital point, which in my mind is the most valuable. Yoga gives you awareness of your body. Not just that, yoga gives you an awareness of your mind. It shows you how your body and your mind are interlinked and how you control the dials to shift and adjust how your nervous system responds to life. Let's say you're stressed. The yogic breathing technique, Satali, where you breathe in through the mouth and out through the nose, has been clinically proven to calm your nervous system. Lying down or taking a pose like Shavasana or a supine twist on the floor would further serve to relax you and connect you to the earth, helping you slow down. Let's say you're depressed or feel lethargic. The yogic breathing technique Kabalabhati, breath of fire, <laughs> where you perform rapid exhales out the nose, would serve to energize you. Performing a balancing pose like tree or a backbend like cobra or wheel would further serve to invite in inspiration, energy, and creativity. Do you see? Most people think yoga is a fitness tool to benefit their physical body, but yoga is so much more than that. It's a tool, a science to adjust your energy. So you don't have to be a victim to your current mood. You don't have to accept your current emotional state. You have the power to shift it. Before I move on to unpack the concept of prana, if you're inspired by this idea and you want to learn more about how to adjust your practice to enhance your mood, make sure you click the link in the description box and the comments below for my free masterclass about how to personalize your yoga practice and make it two times more potent in half the length of time. And with that out of the way, let's demystify our next topic. What is prana? Prana is a unit of energy that rides on the breath. Prana is what makes us alive. I have prana. This glass, not so much. What makes yoga so unique and different from other forms of exercise, like Pilates, for example, is this profound body-mind connection via the breath. Yoga is focused on moving energy through your body in a very specific way by linking breath and movement. You probably already know this. In yoga, we do certain movements on an inhale, opening up the body, and certain movements on an exhale, rounding the body. This is by design. In some yoga poses, you're strengthening muscles. In others, you're stretching them. Where and how your body is positioned in space affects your energy. There are only three ways to move energy in your body. Through breath, through movement, and through sound. Yoga works with all three, with the breath, in my opinion, being the most powerful. This is why the benefits of your yoga practice lie in your deepest, fullest, richest breath. The combination of how you breathe and how you move is like this magic alchemy that profoundly affects your energy. And this energy is what yogis called prana and can be translated from Sanskrit to mean life force energy. So although prana is related to the breath, it's not the same thing as the breath. That's a common misconception. Prana is energy that pulses through your body along a network of channels called nadis. 
Think of these like meridians in acupuncture. So I want you to visualize right now your whole body has these energy channels that might look like your nervous system or your circulatory system if you've seen those types of images. And in some of these nadis or meridian channel pathways, energy is flowing smoothly. But in others, the energy is blocked up or jammed. You can see if I do a big side bend, I'm stimulating, opening up and affecting the nadis, the meridian channels over here, and compressing the ones here on this side, which is going to affect how energy is moving and flowing through these channels in my body. Almost all cultures have the same idea of life force energy. In the Chinese medicine tradition, it's called qi. In ancient Rome, it was called the spirit, anima. We often hear this called the Holy Spirit in Christianity today. Yoga is all about managing this energy, managing your prana. We don't want frantic energy and we don't want depressive energy. We, like Goldilocks, want that energy that's just right. How do we achieve this? By connecting the body and the mind so that we can move through our life more centered, more grounded, more our full self. And think of the breath like the glue that enables the two to talk and influence each other. That allows your body to influence your mind and your mind to influence your body. Write this down. The breath is the bridge between your body and your mind. The breath is the bridge between your body and your mind. Then write the breath is the vehicle upon which prana travels. The breath is the vehicle upon which prana travels. In my online yoga teacher training, I explain prana in the simplest terms possible to start. A corpse, someone who's dead, not alive, does not have prana. Me and you, if you're watching this video, we do. But don't fall into the trap of thinking that there's just one type of prana when there's so many different subsets and textures of energy that exist. For example, the energy of anger is very different from the energy of open-hearted surrender. So prana doesn't just exist within us. It exists around us. For example, when you get goosebumps or you get that gut feeling, you're responding to prana, the sixth sense of your subtle body. For example, even if you were blindfolded and walked into a football stadium or a concert, the hairs on your arms would stand on end. Like you would know that there's like all this big energy of a lot of people around because we respond to the prana of our environment. So how do we begin to work with this energy? Well, here's a bonus word you may or may not know, pranayama. This is a conjoined word that has prana, life force, paired with yama, which means control, or ayama, the same word with just that A in front. We see that a lot in Sanskrit, ayama, which means expansion. So yama means control, ayama means expansion. So pranayama is the practice of both controlling and expanding the breath to affect your energy. Just like we talked about before, certain poses and breathing techniques are energizing, others are calming. When you contort yourself into yoga postures like acupuncture in motion, prana moves into certain areas of your system. This is really valuable to know and figure out. For example, if I need to sit down and write my book, I probably want creative inspired energy. So some backbends might be in order because backbends usher breath in to the chest and the upper lungs and invite in inspiration. If I need to put my kids to bed, I perhaps want a more grounded, kind of centered in my heart, patient, loving energy. So some forward folds and gentle twists on the floor would help me best get into that state. The next thing I'll say, maybe the most important, is that me, you, each of us have areas in our body that hold a lot of prana, excess energy, and areas that are depleted where we maybe don't have enough energy. And you may have a sense of this already. Like when you have a lot of energy up in your head, you're always overthinking everything, and you sense that you're disconnected from your gut instinct, your intuition, your deeper knowing. Or maybe you feel like you don't have enough energy in your throat. You're afraid to speak up for yourself. You avoid confrontation. You're kind of blocked down or shut in this area. Or perhaps you never really feel safe. You have a scarcity issue. You're always worried about money or you sense this dread in your gut or anxiety up in your shoulders. The science of yoga believes that you have two 
real bodies, a physical one and this pranic energy one, and that they are interlinked. While the tangible physical body is made of muscles and bones and things we can see, the pranic body is equally as real. And it's essentially the invisible operating system of why you do the things you do. Now, at this point in the video, you might be wondering, okay, so how do I get x-ray vision and where can I figure out where prana energy is excessive in my body and causing problems and where is it blocked so I can adjust my yoga practice accordingly. That's why your next step is to watch this video next that breaks down the chakras and what is kundalini energy, where I'll teach you the seven chakras that serve as key landmarks or maps on your body so you can figure out where your energy is blocked, where it's excessive, and how to balance it. Thank you so much for watching this video and trusting me to be a part of your healing journey. I'm sending you so much love from my heart to yours. Namaste.